Welcome. Now we're going to go to CSC4, which is Critical Security Control 4 uh, from uh, Center for Internet Security, which publishes what they call security, these security benchmarks. And these uh, benchmarks are available for download. Any person can go register on the website, and these are all free. So what I, what I usually tell um, the students or um, our, our uh, you know, being consultants, our customers, in the um, engagement in the market, when we do that, what we tell them is that there's no value in downloading these, these benchmarks. The value is in implementing these benchmarks. Now, let's look at the overall architecture once again. As you can see, we're looking at CIS, um, the critical security control number four, continuous vulnerability assessment and remediation. And by the way, uh, this particular control, CSC4, also aligns and matches with Uh, the second layer of the security transformation model, which we have introduced in this course. And um, so, you know, there's some good learnings here and some, and some good tips on how to conduct the uh, vulnerability scanning and remediation. Control 4.1, run automated vulnerability scanning tools like Nessus or Qualys or any other one, a good one, uh, against all systems on the network on a weekly Now, this is very important. It says here, weekly basis. And what we see is in different types of enterprises, uh, the scans are being run sometimes once a year, sometimes once a quarter, sometimes once a month. But here, the recommendation is to run it on a weekly basis. And this is the standard, um, the strict standard, or the very high level. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's a very a stringent um, uh, you know, recommendation because If you have a very large enterprise running the scan on a weekly basis and then fixing all of those vulnerabilities on a weekly basis is, 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 a, is, is a, quite a tough job. So run automated vulnerability scanning tools against all systems on the network on a weekly or more frequent basis and deliver prioritized lists of the most critical vulnerabilities to each responsible system administrator. So what happens is that when you run the scan, there's usually hundreds of vulnerabilities Um, or dozens of vulnerabilities, and then you have to, being the information security uh, team member, you have to organize this information and pass it on onto the, uh, let's say, the uh, systems administrator, the network administrator, and the database administrator, and the application administrator. You have to give them this information and organize this information so they can all fix uh, what, what is under their domain of responsibility. Along with risk scores, that compare the effectiveness of system administrators and departments in reducing risk. So what we're saying really here is that uh, the tool, for example, will give you um, the risk rating of a vulnerability, for example, critical or high or medium or low. So we can either share that um, uh, a risk rating or a criticality rating, which has been given by the tool, or you can develop your own rating uh, based on a percentage of systems having a particular tier of vulnerabilities. For example, if your network, uh, if there are 100 network devices and 20% of your network devices have a critical vulnerability, a red critical vulnerability, then you can assign this, you can develop your own type of scoring system and compare and contrast uh, the number of critical vulnerabilities, for example, in the 500 systems um, with, for the systems department. And, and uh, you know, by percentages, you can actually create a scoring system of how uh, insecure uh, the, uh, the overall department or unit is. Use a SCAP-validated vulnerability scanner that looks for both code-based vulnerabilities, such as those described by common uh, uh, vulnerabilities and exposure entries, and configuration-based vulnerabilities, as enumerated by the Common Configuration Enumeration Project, and the most common and most cost-effective a vulnerability scanner, which is Nessus, is SCAP compliant. And I believe that Qualys is also SCAP compliant. Correlate event logs with information from vulnerability scans to fulfill two goals. The first one is personnel should verify that the activity of the regular vulnerability scanning tools is itself logged. And second, Personnel should be able to correlate attack detection events with prior vulnerability scanning results to determine whether the given exploit was used against a target known to be vulnerable. 
So what we're saying here is that you have the vulnerability scanning data, and then you, you should be able to correlate with this with log information and see that if a particular attack happened and a log was generated, at that time, was that particular vulnerability exposed uh, in an exposed state? 4.3, perform vulnerability scanning in authenticated mode, either with agents running locally on each end system to analyze the security configuration, or with remote scanners that are given administrative rights on the system being tested. So, uh, you know, the scans, scans are really of two types. One is a credential-based scan, uh, which is this uh, type of scan which we're talking about here, in which um, there is more administrative privilege, and then there is a non-credential scan, which happens, and, and that is not a very in-depth scan. So the credential scan, you would actually give a login and an ID and, uh, and give some privilege to that user ID and give that information to the scanner, for example, enter it in the Nessus scanner, and when it scans, it'll actually log in and have those privileges which that user ID is entitled to. So that type of credential scan is much more useful because the scanner is able to go in into the system and, and, have, and has a much better view of the uh, system from inside uh, with, the, with the help of those credentials. The non-credential scan uh, is not that useful and will not give you that much information, but then the non-credential scan could probably be your first run. For the first time you do your scanning, you can do the non-credential scan because you may have a, a, a very large number of machines and you may not be able to, in the first round, uh, you may not be able to enter all the credentials. And use a dedicated account for authenticated vulnerability scans, which should not be used for any other administrative activities and should be tied to specific machines at specific IP addresses. So here, we're being asked to use a dedicated account for authenticated vulnerability scans. So that ID, which will be which on, on that system, which will be entered on the vulnerability scanner for a credential-based scan should not be used for any other activity. Ensure that only authorized employees have access to the vulnerability management user interface and that roles are applied to each user. Obviously, um, the information security team member or an authorized signed off team member should have access to the vulnerability scanner. And we need to control access to the vulnerability scanner and need to identify roles on the vulnerability scanner if that is permitted. Subscribe to vulnerability intelligence services in order to stay aware of emerging exposures and use the information gained from this subscription to update the organization's vulnerability scanning activities on at least a monthly basis. So here, um, what we're really saying is that although you're using vulnerability scanning, but then there are vulnerability intelligence services, and what they do is that they publish information about vulnerabilities. Um, and we need to uh, you know, keep, in, keep in contact or keep accessing such uh, sites or portals or services. And one example is the uh, security operation centers or um, the other one is the um, incident response capability, uh, which is referred to as CERT, Computer Emergency Response Team. So usually at the country level, national level, or at the industry level, these CERTs or SOCs are available and they, they publish the vulnerability in intelligence information. Alternatively, ensure that the vulnerability scanning tool that you're using, like Nessus, um, that you're using, they are regularly updated with all relevant important security vulnerabilities. And the good tools, whenever there is a vulnerability, they will pick it up and enter it into their database. So you can do that as well. Make sure that your tool um, actually is updating itself and has uh, in its library and in its database, it has obtained the uh, most recent vulnerabilities uh, from, from its uh, backend. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.